Minecraft is full of structures, and a lot of them look pretty average. So today, I'm going to upgrade them, adding secret traps, brand new loot, and making them much, much more OP. And I'm going to start small and simple with the swamp hut and the igloo. Then work my way up to the bigger and more complex builds throughout the video, which is going to require 100 stacks of diamonds. Now, the Swamp Hut is, is pretty small, and it was added to Minecraft 12 years ago. In all of that time, it's not changed one bit, except they made a black cat spawn there. So we're going to spruce it up by removing the spruce and giving it a mangrove makeover. And you know what else gets a makeover if I say a certain word? The button underneath the video beginning with S. It's a pretty new feature, and I want you to look at it right now, because if I say the word subscribe, then the subscribe button should get a rainbow effect. And if you're new here and you press it, you'll get a load of fireworks on your screen. You, you should totally test it out. And to transform this swamp hut, I'm not only going to need mangrove wood, which I, I, apparently I don't have any of, but I'm also going to need muddy mangrove roots. And to get them, I'm going to go out in search of a mangrove swamp. I'm not too sure where the nearest one is, so uh, we've got a bit of a journey ahead of us. Don't know when that nether portal's from, but also, guys, the subscribe button isn't the only thing that gives fireworks when you press it. Because you also get fireworks when you leave a like on the video, so you, you should try that as well. Because I do think it looks kind of cool. I'm also finding every biome except what I'm looking for. And this is actually the ocean monument where I got the Elder Guardian in my mob collection. So there you go. Now you know where we are. But that's of no use to me at the moment. So I'm going to keep flying through the rain across the world. Here we go. This looks like the kind of place I'm after. And now that I'm here, I can dig into the side of the tree, mine up the logs, and grab the muddy mangrove roots. With that all sorted, I'll also grab a few of these, and then I can build a portal to get home quite a bit faster. I should also probably spend a little bit of time repairing this elytra so that it is no longer broken. Now, as part of this build, I'm going to need a few fences and also some stairs. And then I'm going to smelt clay. No, I'm not. Hold on. I've, I've done that wrong. Oh, hold the phone. We're getting the wrong material. Instead, <laughs> we're going to smelt the clay balls so that then I can make the flower pots. And I also think if I grab one of these sherds. Also, it's sherd, guys. Look at it. It's not shard. It's sherd. The amount of people that told me off in the comments drove me crazy, guys. It's not my fault. I think they should be called shards, but just Google it. I promise you I'm using the right terminology. Anyway, I want to take one of these, put it with some bricks, and then we get a decorated pot. The only things missing now are a couple of mushrooms, and we're ready to build this. I'm going to expand this pathway over in this direction, and I should also connect it up to this building whilst I'm at it. And then I'll expand it around this corner, along here, and then across this way. And this is the spot that the swamp hut can go. My name for it is the mangrove hut, and the plan is to have little pillars of the logs like this with the muddy mangrove roots in between. And now I'm going to build the actual hut part, which means even more pillars upwards, and I'm going to grab the normal roots and use these as the walls. It really gives it that kind of rundown, overgrown feel, which is what I kind of expect a building in a swamp to look like anyway. These fences add a bit of decoration. Normally, these would have been spruce, I believe. Okay, never mind. They would have been oak. I was wrong. So these are going to be like this, and then because I want to put flowers on top of them as well, the little plant pots nicely blend in, and they just look like they're part of it. Now to add on the roof, which is more muddy mangrove, followed finally by adding stairs all the way around the outside. And there you have it. It's my muddy mangrove swamp hut. I think underneath I'll also make this grass pass just to give it a little bit more character. And you know what? I've got an even better idea. I can grab some mud and some ice to give it that mangrove swamp feel underneath. Yeah, I quite like how this is looking. I reckon the pillars should also have a bit of mud. The same for this one. And then the rest can be grass path. Oh, yes. It, it, it just brings it together a little more. One single ladder is needed so you can actually get into it. And after adding a bit of string to protect it from snow... The first of the structures is done. And I think Mojang should actually add this one to the mangrove swamps because I think it looks very, very cool. Next, I said we'd start with the small structures, which means the next one is going to be the igloo. I do actually have one of these fairly near my house. You can see we're not far from the village at all. And here it is. Pretty standard, made of snow, little secret compartment underneath. Although not all igloos do have that secret spot. And I want my igloo to look like it was touched by the hand of Midas. If you don't know what that is, it's from Greek mythology where a man wished that everything he touched turned to gold. Also, as you can see, we've, uh, we've got plenty of that in stock. At first, he thought it was a blessing, but he soon realized that it was actually a curse. Because all his food turned to gold, all his friends turned to gold if he touched them. Yeah, all of that. Anyway, we're going to build an igloo that's made out of gold and the most valuable ice, blue ice. That's convenient. I need exactly 26, and that's what I had in the chest. And I'd also like lava to be part of this build, just because an igloo is normally really cold, so it'd be quite a cool contrast to have something that's really hot in there. I've also got a bed and dripstone. Don't ask what I'm going to do with that. But yeah, it's probably going to be a pretty dangerous place to sleep. 
So the igloo can go right here. As I said, it's made out of gold, and that's exactly how it looks. And we're going to build the outline, which is incredibly easy to do. And I'm also going to dig out the floor, because it's not going to be snow right there. No, instead, it's going to be a ring of ice with lava inside it, followed by more ice and orange stained glass on top. Here, I'm going to have some windows, and this is going to be where the bed is. It, it looks fine for now, but but don't you worry. It, it, it won't stay that way. I also fell down. We should add some more ice there and then build it up with more gold. There we go. That is the exterior done. And I should also extend the grass pathway so it connects. In fact, now it looks bad. I should under here also have gold. You don't want to be seeing dirt in the foundations. You want to think that it goes all the way down. And in a normal igloo, you get a crafting table and a furnace. Well, we're going to have a smithing table and a blast furnace. And then a soul torch instead of a redstone one. And finally, some dripstone, which I kind of thought were almost like icicles. Icicles would be an amazing addition to Minecraft, by the way. They could just be very similar to point dripstone. And then we're just going to have these dotted around. We're going to have one right here. Imagine sleeping in that bed. In fact, when it goes dark, I I'll actually do it. It'll probably look quite funny. So yeah, tonight's going to be an exciting night. Anyway, that's is the igloo done the golden igloo i think it looks very very nice indeed much more exciting than this one right here that mojang added and there's also sadly no space for a secret tunnel because it's, it's all lava i do need to put some string on the roof to protect it from any falling snow and that is the two small structures successfully transformed and now we're going to move on to the medium ones which is the jungle temple and the pillager outpost although before i can build them i am going to need more space which means I should probably get rid of some of this mountain. And before I can fully do that, a promise is a promise. I have to sleep in this bed underneath the dripstone. I'm sure I'll be perfectly safe, even if I am staring death right in the face. And now I can actually get busy flattening this terrain. And there we go. It is done. I know I could terraform the terrain just to make it look a little bit tidier. But we'll worry about that later. For now, I'm also going to expand out this terrain just a little bit more. I can also put all of these shovels into this chest. I thought it'd be better to use them by trading with the villagers than risk breaking my netherite shovel. Now, both of my pickaxes can be repaired. And the next structure that I will build is going to be a new and improved jungle temple. However, further down the line, I'm going to be recreating a nether fortress. And instead of using normal nether bricks, I want to use red nether brick. What's the problem with that? Well, crafting them takes a lot of nether wart. We have a decent amount, but when you combine that with the blocks that I've already got, it's going to be nowhere near enough because two nether wart makes one block and I require over a thousand of them. Let's grab a load of soul sand, some building blocks, and later on, I'll make it so that it works with redstone. But for now, I just want to build a really large farm for it and I'll do it next to my wheat farm. Let's flatten off this area. It's nothing like I had to flatten off before, so I don't mind. And right here, I'm going to start building the blocks. I'm going to build it in such a way so that it mirrors the farm here. That way it will look good and the water should all flow down nicely. There's enough space here for 400 nether wart, which if I harvest with fortune three will get me an average of 1,800 in total. But I'm also going to go and grab some black stained glass so that I have the option to use water if I want to. And I'll also need to grab a few redstone items. This glass should be able to hold the water in. I'm also going to need a little bit behind like so. The concrete will have redstone on to activate these upside down pistons. The on off switch is going to be right here. And with all the pistons activated, I can add in the ice. These hoppers are the collection. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is that. Everything's ready. And I can't do much else until they've all grown, although some of them have. So let's go and grab them using fortune. And all of the extra nether wart I got from that can be used to fill in these gaps. And whilst I wait for all of these to grow, I'm going to use the time productively and use this tree farm to get a load of birch wood. I reckon I've been here long enough. Let's go ahead and turn it off. And as you can see, the birch wood stocks are looking a lot healthier. And pretty much all of this has grown. So as I said, I'm going to manually mine it all with a fortune axe. That means I will get more per drop, up to seven from one nether wart, believe it or not. And that is much better than if I just use the water to harvest it. I can then go ahead and plant all of it back down. The surplus can go into this chest. And whilst I wait for all of that to grow, I reckon I can now spend a load of time farming up spruce. I've now run out of bone meal, but I have also ended up with plenty of spruce logs. Whilst I was doing that, all of the nether wart has also now grown, which means I'll have more than enough to transform the fortress later on. But in the meantime, I need to work on the jungle temple transformation. To begin with, it requires just over seven stacks of blackstone. Then I'm going to need a load of redstone items because I'm going to build some brand new traps. Since the ones that are in the vanilla temple are, are, are pretty boring. And I've almost got every item right here. 
However, I need two glow lichen. I don't think I have any of them, so I'm going to grab some shears and then head down this chute. This is my little amethyst farm, but I can go from here down into a cave. And there's, th there they go. We're already, we've seen some. Both of them can be grabbed. And now for the actual item that I need to get loads of. Gilded Blackstone. I only have 23 of it. And for this transformation, I require 10 stacks. Now, unfortunately, because this is an item that you can only get in Bastions, there isn't really any way to farm it. So instead, I'll have to do it the old-fashioned way, which is to head to a Bastion, find the block, and then mine it. And conveniently, this is also something that you can find in the chests, as well as stuff like ancient debris. I found a decent amount, but I'm, I'm kind of curious to know if there's loads more hidden in the walls. It's kind of difficult to tell unless I just mine around, unless I quickly head back home and try grabbing some TNT. Then I can dig a bit of a tunnel right through and blow up the bastion to hopefully reveal a bit more. Okay, guys, it worked. The plan is working. We've got loads more. Okay, even, even gold. I, I did know this room existed, but I may not have found some of this without the TNT. So I say we just keep going and blast this place wide open. Also, what are you doing here? You want some TNT, mate? There you go. I think I just made them all more mad and there's some stuff I want to grab here. So don't mind me. I'm just going to get it. And <laughs> TNT was the only way up. Alrighty. Don't worry, guys. I'm just going to keep going. Wait, does TNT drop it as well? Oh, that makes it even better. I'm sure there must be some efficient way to do this, but the fact that TNT drops the item is so, so useful. And I'm going to use that knowledge to search as much of this place as I can. I managed to get nearly a stack and a half from this bastion. And this method is also a great way to gather up normal blackstone. And now it's on to the next one to hopefully find plenty more. That too was a little bit close for comfort. But on a positive note, at the very least, I now have five stacks of this, which means that I am officially halfway. And I should probably be more careful with the brutes around because I, I don't want to die. I just love spleefing these guys into lava. It's so easy. And this particular bastion... Okay, well, for a start, it's got amazing loot in here. And secondly, it's also the one where you get loads and loads of the gilded blackstone all the way around the building. So it's, it's quite easy to get a lot of it just because of how abundant it is. And this gives me eight stacks. Fantastic. Okay, I've been following. And on top of that, there's even more lurking around here in this room. It's great that I'm finally getting closer, and I should probably ban myself from using this in the future, because gathering up the gilded blackstone and exploring the area is quite time consuming. Although when you get a chest like this, it, it kind of is quite nice. I'm so close to having everything I need, and here's something I didn't realize for a while. If you look underneath a the chest, there is always a piece of gilded black... Well, I just let that one burn. But yeah, any chest that you might find have the gilded blackstone underneath, which is just good to know. And I also think that combined with what I have at home, I should just about have enough. But as I'm heading back, I'll keep my eye out for another bastion just in case. And then we can build the Transform Jungle Temple, which in my opinion looks pretty cool. And do you know what else looks pretty cool? Uh, the little guy that's been watching me for the entire video. And this is also the final weekend to get my S3737 blockhead. The timer only has 48 hours left. He can even take his sunglasses off. And if you don't get him in time, he will be gone forever. Sorry, mate. That, that wasn't very nice of me, was it? But if you think you can take care of him better than I can, then go to the link at the top of the description, which is blockheads.store. And on my way back, I've found another bastion. This will just top me up nicely. So that'll be completely ready for the build. Here we are, home sweet home. I can drop off all this other loot that I got. And then I can grab the items in these shulker boxes. Because it is time to start building the transformed jungle temple. And in order to build it, I actually need to dig out quite a bit of the ground. Because this is a structure that has a tunnel underneath. And of course... I've got to have a trap down there. It's going to be a pretty evil lava trap, but I, I still think they should add it to the main game. Even if it would probably be a guaranteed kill for anybody playing Minecraft for the first time. Now from here, I'm actually going to start with the spot that is going to have the trap in. So there's going to be lava right there, and then there's going to need to be some redstone. The redstone is going to involve sticky pistons like this, and they are all going to be extended, which will hide the trap. So I'm putting target blocks along here. I, I don't think they really need to be target blocks, but anyway, I'm, <laughs> I'm going with that. Then this is going to come around and we're going to have three more like so. And these ones actually do need to be target blocks. Next, I'm going to add in all of the lava. And then a redstone torch right here, which will activate the pistons. Looks good, but it's not much of a trap because it's not very well hidden. So I'm now going to start building out the floor. It's not really a specific pattern. Just want to make it look nice and random. And to be honest, when I'm finished with this jungle temple, it probably will look like a form of bastion, which may look good in the nether. I could call it the jungle remnant or the bastion jungle. I, I, I don't know. But what I do know is that any good jungle temple 
has traps hidden around. So this redstone is going to link around and set off these dispensers. But I, I don't want them to just be shooting out arrows like they normally do. Since this does have a bit of a bastion-y, larvary feel to it, I'm thinking that we nip back home and head to the bastion experts, which are the piglins. Now, these guys love to take the gold from me. And in return, they always give loads and loads of fire charges. So now when you enter this jungle temple, you don't get shot with an arrow, you get shot with a fireball. Yeah, I think that seems fitting. Let's continue building. And I think this is the perfect point to hook up the redstone. Now, both of these levers won't actually do anything. They're just going to extend some pistons so that you think something's happening and you might get some treasure. But in reality, it is just a red herring. And from there, I'm going to add a repeater because this is the real one. We're going to add a single piece of redstone dust like that. And when we flick this lever... Bam. Now, who would stand back and flick that lever? Maybe the clever players, but most people will do it like that. Although they've fallen the lava, I'm, uh, I'm just a bit more careful. So that's the bottom bit. Now we mainly just need to work on the tunnel out of here and also the exterior so that it looks nice from the outside. I'm also going to grab the other buckets of lava and add one there and also one right here. Just gives it a little bit of light and it gives it a... Okay, I, you know what? I just fell for my own trap, guys. That's how you know it's a good one. But yeah, I, I should probably just focus on building this entire thing up. That should be the upstairs bit done where the players can kind of come and look out of the windows if they'd like to. And then I can top off the roof with a couple of stairs, a couple of blocks, and two more stairs. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is it. It is now complete. And I think it looks pretty cool. I think it definitely has a very netherish feel to it. And inside is even better. You do kind of feel like you're in a bastion, but you can't quite put your finger on it. It's got traps hidden all over the place. You know what would be really good if I'd made that trap come up to here as well? I can't do it much further because there's, there's open blocks there. Don't fall for your trap for the for a second time, SB. You can, you can fool me once, but twice will not happen. Oh, and I completely forgot to add the most important thing. Hold on, hold on. Dodge it. There we go. We're through. <laughs> and this one. Now, I'm going to put in three gold blocks. Just as a bit of loot, you know, for anybody that is brave enough to, to come here. I've also noticed I, if I put glow lichen in front, the glow lichen disappears. Like, if I set this off. Oh, it doesn't there, but I, I put it there and I, I don't know where it's gone. Maybe it, oh, it will have burnt from the lava. Okay, that explains it. Not to worry, it's just that I put a lot of effort in getting it and it's <laughs> kind of a waste of time now, I see. And now the next of the structures that we're going to transform is the pillager outpost. I'm going to make it a skulk themed one and it's almost going to look like the kind of thing that you could find underground in an ancient city. But instead, it'll be an outpost. It's also going to have a lot of shriekers and also a lot of skulk catalysts. I have a few of them here, but probably not enough. And in this shulker box... Yeah, probably not all the ones that I need. So to get all the Skulk Catalyst, which is the main thing I need loads of, I need 290 to be precise, I can use my Warden Farm. I built this quite a while ago. I don't know how we do it. See, we've got four Skulk Catalysts, but every time a Warden dies, it drops one. And to set this off, all I really need to do is just shoot a few arrows here, and it will now activate the Shrieker. And as you can see, out of the ground crawls a warden. Well, you can kind of see it in the darkness. And in theory, this, this should keep spawning them over and over again, but it, I don't know if that is actually working properly. But not to worry. I need 290 Skull Catalysts, and I can just stand on top of here, and it will keep activating the Shrieker over and over again. And that means wardens will keep spawning and dying from entity cramming up here. Then the Skull Catalyst just filter into this chest, and it'll take me about 30 to 40 minutes to get all of the Skull Catalysts that I need. I think I've now been here long enough and there's loads of it in the chest. Now with those out of the way, I do still need 52 Shriekers and 23 Skulk Sensors. As you can see, we have all of the Shriekers and all of the Sensors that can be found in this shulker box right here. And then really the only other items I need are the ones that can be crafted from Deep Slate, such as Deep Slate tiles, and then the stairs, walls, and slab variants. I'm also gonna need a few Skulk Veins, five will do, and then because it is still a pillager outpost, even if it's getting a Skulk makeover, so I'm also going to put eight ominous banners on it. Ominous banners are something that you only get from pillager captains, or sometimes from raids, and my hero of the village farm is pretty good for this because it does get your pillager captains from the bottom. So if we fly over, we could get a couple from it. You know what? I I can't really tell. I can take one, but I'll break the machine if I take too many. Don't worry, though. There's always plan B, which is to fly over to my very first raid farm. I don't know why I didn't come here to start with, because I'm pretty sure I made a chest that filters out all of the banners. There you go. It does. I think I blocked it, but we've got all of, all of them in here that we're going to need. So let's get all eight of them. That means I've got every single item, and I can begin building the skulk-infested pillager outpost. And to actually do that, I'm definitely going to need to expand this pathway from there 
all the way down to the bottom so that it's then ready for every single structure to be built next to it. So I've done the starting outline for this and I also need to dig out the entire floor. From there, I can fill it in with Skulk Catalyst. Granted, it, it probably would have been a lot cheaper just to use the Skulk Blocks, but this is just a little bit more robust you're not going to accidentally break the floor, are you? And then I'm going to steadily build the walls upwards. And on these little bits here, there are going to be Skulk Sensors and Skulk Shriekers, but I'm not going to add them until the end. Otherwise, they're just going to keep going off while I'm building and it'll, it'll just make everything noisy. This is the height of the first floor. And this is where it actually is kind of useful to use Skulk Catalysts because you can see them from the side and you can see them from below and it gives a very, a very interesting look, doesn't it? Now to continue building everything upwards, you can see from here, you can, you can look out. It's nice and spacious. That's exactly how it is in the outpost. And we can fill all of this in. I don't know how I feel about the bottom of Skulk Catalyst. Like, from the top and the sides, they look pretty cool. From the bottom, it just looks really weird. I can now continue bringing these walls up even higher. And after I've added this floor down, which makes it the top one, I'm now going to add all of the ominous banners. And that is where you'll be able to tell that it is indeed a pillager outpost, even if it, it doesn't look like a normal one. Kind of just going to step back and have a look. Yeah, you know what? It's definitely coming together. It's definitely got the feel of the outpost, but it's also very skulky as well. The roof is going to be made up entirely of skulk blocks, as you can see, and I'm, I'm building these up layer by layer. And after that, it is now time to add all the decorations. As at the moment, it, it, it kind of looks quite bare. To begin with, instead of a normal chest at the top, it's instead going to be an ender chest. I think, uh, you know, that looks quite cool, doesn't it? And then entirely around the outside at the top, I'm going to put Skulk Shriekers. This is why it, it kind of will get noisy if these start getting activated. But the good thing is, unless I stand on top of one of them, it won't, it won't make a noise. However, I'm going to add something else that will make it make a noise. And that is the Skulk Sensors. I'm going to have them around the outside. They're going to be along here like so. And yeah, every time they, they detect a vibration now, they're all going to get set off. So it's, it's going to get noisy. Obviously, because I placed the Skulk Shriekers, they can't go off. So that's at least a, a bonus, you know, that, well, a warden can't spawn anyway. Otherwise, I definitely wouldn't be building with these. But yeah, it just adds a bit of decoration around the outside. And I can add a little bit of Skulk here and there just as an extra, extra touch. And that is my Skulk Outpost complete. I think it's looking pretty cool indeed. I'll just touch up the area around the outside by filling in these gaps with snow. And that is the medium structures done, which means I can now move on to the big ones. Now, of course, I did say earlier that as part of the Nether Fortress transformation, I was going to turn all the normal Nether Brick to be red Nether Bricks. And let's just say I'm glad I prepared in advance by building this farm, because now I can just go into this chest, grab all the Nether Wart, and craft the 1,000 red Nether Bricks that I need. Well, unfortunately, I've pretty much run out of these fellows, which means grabbing the loads of netherrack and setting it all off smelting in the super smelter. That's every single one that I need. In fact, I actually got quite a few extra from that, which is good because you never know when they might come in handy. And with that out of the way, I also need quite a lot of red nether wart blocks. Now you'd think, oh, maybe I need to take the nether wart and craft them. That's going to use up even more of them. But oh no, I've got this giant farm that's been getting me loads and loads of the wood variants, as you can see. Well, maybe not in this chest, but also, yeah, the warped wart and the nether wart blocks. So there's absolutely no reason to worry about that. And then everything else that I need is pretty straightforward. I do need a load of nether brick fences, but as you can see, we're, we're very well stocked in, uh, in that department. And as for the 66 buckets of lava that the farm needs, I can get them from a farm that I built about 6,000 days ago. Yes, I have not one, but two massive lava farms, which works with all these cauldrons being below dripstones that are dripping off lava. So let's go ahead and press that button. And then we just hold right click and yeah, it'll just keep filling up the buckets and they will keep going into this soul sand. And because there's a hopper underneath the soul sand, the lava buckets keep getting picked up. And now that it's completed, these chests are full. These chests are not full just from that. They've been full for some time. I've also got the other one over there, but I'm not going to use it. Instead, I'll fill up these three shulker boxes. This build is also going to involve a beacon, so let's craft one of them. And the final touch is one singular glowstone. So I'm going to start with the base, and this is going to be a border of nether wart blocks all the way around the outside. And then on the inside of that, I can fill in the red nether brick. And, and yes, I know that the nether fortress is one of the biggest structures in Minecraft generally. But what I've done is I've combined three parts of it to make a bit more of a condensed one, but... You could always imagine what the entire fortress would look like if it all looked like this, but it, yeah, it, that would just take me way too long to do. So this is what the smaller version will look like. And you may have been wondering, why did I need 60 buckets of lava? Well, wonder no more, because these trenches that I've just dug are going to be filled... Okay, well, not like that. 
<laughs> Get it right, Esme. Remove the snow before you place it. But yeah, these trenches that I've built, I'm gonna, I did it again. <laughs> yeah, anyway, they're going to be built with... Oh, they're going to be filled, should I say, with lava. As long as I wait for the lava to get rid of the snow, I don't really have to worry about anything. It's just slow and steady. Repeat the same process over and over again. And with this side done, the other part is just going to be a mirror image of it. It's also going to be filled with lava. I do feel that something like this really does improve the feel of the fortress, just having lava running through it. I don't know why Minecraft doesn't add it. They, they could learn a thing or two from this video. Although in its current state, it's, it's not very safe. You could end up walking into it, which is why on top of it, there's going to be glass. You'll see the lava, but you won't be able to walk into it. And then either side of the glass, there's just going to be this red nether brick. Looks quite good. You can also see I've got a bit of a pattern going here with the nether wall. It's also going to go on top. That is really going to drive me crazy if I have to keep building it. Good job. It's, <laughs> it's not going to go on like that forever. Because it only happens when I'm right next to it. And you know what I also want to do? I want to add a secret shulker box right here. I'm not putting anything in it just yet, but it'll be very, very cool when I do. Let's just add a few more of these on and then layer everything up even more with red nether brick. And this middle bit is a part of the fortress that you've seen many times before. It's the room that kind of separates the outside part of the fortress to the inside part. Although in this fortress, it doesn't. Anyway, we're going to put lava on top and then you can see they've got the secret shulker box. You wouldn't know it's there. And that has to be some good loot in it, doesn't there? What do you reckon? A couple of netherite ingots. I think that's that's probably what, what it should be. So let's go ahead and add one, two. And then I'll also have a load of gold to go around the outside. Oh, you know what? You'd be very glad if you discovered that chest, wouldn't you? Imagine if there was just like one in a hundred fortresses had something underneath the lava here. That would be quite cool. Anyway, we'll, we'll see if they ever had it. Very unlikely indeed. Instead, I should just focus on building this up even higher. And this room is starting to come together. We're kind of just going to have fences alternating with the bricks, which is something you do see in this room in fortresses. Yeah, it's, it's getting there. I'll also add the ceiling on top. And then I'm also going to build a full beacon because I feel like the ones I've got dotted around the world don't really fit into the scenery very well. No, instead, they're just very, very out of place. So if I build one on top of here, it'll probably look a bit nicer. From the outside, it looks like it's built of gold. But on the inside, there's, there's a lot of iron just to save resources a little bit. Then the beacon can go on top. I do also want a bit of red stained glass, which I don't have on me. So I'll grab one of those. And now it does look a bit better with the beam being red. And finally on top, I'm going to add another alternating pattern of fences and blocks. So that is this bit done. But what about this little area right here? Well, this is going to be one of the thrones that you find in the fortress. And this always has a blaze spawner. Although I unfortunately don't have any of the mob spawner blocks available to me to place. So for this build, it'll sadly have to do without. But I'm still going to bring this all the way around. I can make it look almost the same. It just looks like somebody came and broke the spawner or something like that. So that is this bit done. And then I just need to add the fences around the outside. And it is done. Operation Transform the Fortress is complete. You walk into it right here. Then you can go through, have a little look in that room, and finally go to the throne part. I quite like it. And now we are on to the final one that we're going to be transforming. It's the Desert Pyramid. And this one is the hardest because it is going to require... 100 stacks of diamonds. Now, don't worry, guys, because right now I have a grand total of two. Yeah, I've got two diamonds. But don't worry, because in my ender chest, I've... <laughs> I think I've got I've got four more and then eight. Yeah, you know what? Let's let's just see how many we've got all together. I'll quickly just mine these up. 30. That's not bad. What else? I need 100. So I need 99 and a half stacks. Yeah. All right. We have got a little bit to go. But in my world, as you can see, I've collected up 32,804 diamonds. So getting another 6,000 shouldn't be that hard. Especially when you consider that I have Minecraft's ultimate mining machine, the Infinibor, which has cleared out thousands and thousands and thousands of blocks for me to be able to find diamonds. And as amazing as this machine is, it's kind of outdated. A newer and better Infinibor has been released. You see, Cubic Meter saw me build it to collect netherite and saw how unfriendly it was for a survival player. So he's made one that is much better, much more customizable, and much more survival friendly with the resources. So I say we build that and use it to collect up all the diamonds that I need for the Diamond Desert Pyramid. As I said, it doesn't require anywhere near as many resources as the last one, but it still needs quite a few. So I am going to get busy collecting. Once I craft a stone cutter, I have absolutely every item that I need. And it's it's actually not that much, is it? Cubic Meter really has done an awesome job at making this survival friendly. And now this does have to be built in a hole down near bedrock. 
And I don't really want to have to spend time digging one. But thankfully, I don't have to worry about that because I already have a perimeter right here, which is perfect. I don't use this raid farm anymore. It was mainly for XP. And I've since got a better one. So this is the place that I will build the new and improved Infinibar. That does mean just a little bit of this terrain here needs to be taken away. And this bridge doesn't really matter, but I'm, I'm going to mine it away just to be safe. And also you can see that this is where I built the first massive mining machine that I made. And that did get me a lot of diamonds, but... <laughs> How things have definitely moved on. So I'm going to start by grabbing some red concrete and red glass. And then I'll build this massive red square. In order to run the Infinibore machine, this will have to be unloaded. If it does get unloaded, then you, you know you're in the right spot. And in order to build this, I'm going to start at the bottom and slowly work my way upwards. All these redstone lamps are one of the ways to see the machine's progress whilst it's running. And this right here is the bit that splits up the TNT. The old Infinibore used minecarts to separate all of them out. But this one is so much better because it uses iron nuggets. Well, it, it can technically be any item, which makes it really, really cheap to do. And this bit of terrain right here is just slightly in the way. Like, I, I can leave all of that, but this bit just needs to be moved out a little bit to make room for a little water chute that will push the TNT along and the stone cutter will help align it. And then this massive platform here is going to be the base of the conveyor that will warp all of the TNT into that wall and thus break loads and loads of blocks. And that'll mean that I'll be able to get loads and loads of diamonds. And all that's happening here is I'm just creating a big conveyor of repeating pistons that just go over and over again in this exact same pattern. And there's also going to be scaffolding that goes all the way along here. This is so that the game doesn't try and calculate the fall damage for TNT, which reduces the lag. I know TNT shouldn't take fall damage, but for some reason the game decides it wants to calculate it. But if you place scaffolding down, that solves the problem anyway. So yeah, all of this redstone that I've set up will nicely separate out the TNT. And it's the gold pressure plates that are only activated by the iron nuggets that help separate it as well. It's a very, very clever system indeed. And most of the redstone down here is now done and it's just a case of transferring the signals upwards using redstone in some areas and walls in others. I've now fully built up the TNT conveyor bit as you can see and that's that's the height that the TNT is going to go for. So it does make a taller tunnel than the last one. I also need to put composters like this with redstone. And I also need to use carrots to add a slight bit of compost to the composters. And what that does is it changes the signal output that they will now give to a comparator. And now comes a very important part where I have to add in the barrels, but I, I can't just place them. No, I have to fill them. Each one needs to be filled with 20 wooden axes. It's a fairly simple task. The only difficult bit is that I, I don't really have that much inventory space. So let's clear a little bit more. It works best if I craft 40 sticks at a time, then all the axes and then fill the barrel. And the actual purpose of these axes is just to give the comparators a certain signal strength. Although I don't have any now because I had to put them in here. So yeah, coming out of these barrels, we're going to have comparators. All the other ones have them. And then on the layer above, I'm going to add even more barrels. And they also all need to be filled up with 20 axes. Although having said that, these five barrels here only need 19 in. So yeah, it's a minor detail, but it's very important to the machine. There we go. And this is also the part where I need to write out some books and then add them to the lectern and make sure it's on the correct page. I've got more redstone lamps here to make another progress bar, which will once again help in making sure that the machine doesn't break. On this rail right here, I'm going to put a minecart and, and this is going to act as a player detector because if I add a pressure plate on top, you'll see it keeps activating and that means the game knows that a player is nearby. And when the player flies away so the machine can run, the minecart will no longer be loaded and this pressure plate will not be activated. The machine has two of them and they kind of just act as safety switches. This is where the other player detector is going to go and it's going to be right by the TNT duper. Yep, we've nearly finished, but the most dangerous part is ahead because we will still need to build the area that produces all the TNT that gets warped into the terrain. And now once I've added these 10 lanterns, every single thing except for the TNT will have been placed down. So let's be very careful. Nothing should activate it. It should all be fine. And with that, the machine is done. Yes, it, it, it looks quite complicated. And I will also add all the signs above the lecterns to say what each thing does. And I'm also going to mine away a bit more of this wall here just to make sure it's fully out of the way and, and nothing interferes. There we go. I reckon that should be more than enough for mined out. 
And that's every single one of the signs is sorted. I just need to dye it and also make it glow so it, <laughs> it looks nice. I'm also going to fly to the AFK spot that we need to wait at whilst the machine is running. It's, it's right over here in this exact chunk. I'll just pop back to the storage to offload all of my items. And now, to put it simply, we just need to test the machine. I'm pretty sure all the settings are correct. I'm not going to explain them right now. Instead, I'm just going to add an item here. I'm going to turn this down to be zero, so it only does a small tunnel, just so we can make sure it's working. You can see this is flashing. This means it's ready to go. We use this, and now, I think... We just fly over here. We fly over here and we wait in this chunk. I'm going to add some glass walls just to make it a little bit safer. And whilst I'm in here, the machine will be busy working. And now the correct amount of time has passed, so it should be done. And look at this. The machine has worked perfectly. It's only done a tiny tunnel. As I said, it was just a little test run. But already, look at all the diamonds. And because it's a taller tunnel, look at that. It reveals way more diamonds up there. It gets more in the sides. And it blasts more for me as well. Look at that. I didn't even mind the ones in the walls. And I already got nearly two stacks. That only took me a couple of minutes, which is kind of crazy. So now it's time to do the big operation. Having this set to zero made it a 50 block long tunnel. If I change it to 90, it'll be 500 blocks long. And if I also set it so that it repeats itself 15 times, that will mean that the tunnel is going to be 7,500 blocks long, and I should have no problem in getting the 100 stacks of diamonds needed. Well, many hours have now passed, and the machine has finished. And whilst I've been here, I've been getting loads and loads of wool. In fact, we're completely overflowing. Well, that's a, a nice byproduct. Don't know what I'll do with it all, but it's, it's kind of cool. And now, let's see how the machine has done. And look at this. Just look at this. A never-ending tunnel, 7,500 blocks wide, revealing loads and loads of diamonds. It goes on and on and on. There's going to be so, so much to get here, so I will be able to get the 100 stacks. But before I do that, I think I should probably get rid of everything I've got. All of this can safely go into there. And if I place down the diamond ores that I've found so far, I can mine them up with fortune. They'll repair my silk touch pickaxe a little bit. And these diamonds can be going into a shulker box. I'll also get my pickaxe repaired. And with that done, I can lower my render distance to help prevent items from despawning. And I can begin collecting. It's even revealed new diamonds in this first bit because it's blasted it for the second time. And it has to be said that it is quite crazy. Wow, got the first stack already. That was very, very fast. This machine really is so much better than the old one. I also know I didn't really explain how the machine works, but I've already explained it multiple times in videos like these. So if you'd like more information, feel free to check them out. And in other news, I now already have over six stacks of diamonds. Yeah, I'm sure I can get to 100 in no time at all. I've also noticed that a lot of the items in the middle part of the tunnel have despawned around here. And I can only guess that whilst the TNT was warping, it maybe loads these chunks a little bit and it's caused some of them to despawn. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Because at the edge, you can see there's way more items. So I'm thinking as we get further down the tunnel, we may get to a point where there's a lot more blocks. But that's just a theory. A game! Y you know what? It's, it, it's, it's too soon. And that is 10 stacks. Wow, just look at all of those. Should probably start loading up this shulker box. And then continue collecting. I love it when you can see the terrain falling in front of you. Just, just look at it all come tumbling down. I don't think my theory's right because there's still only really loads of items at the sides. And then in the middle, it's a lot more scarce. So I'm going to fly all the way to the end and see if there's any change further down the tunnel. Yeah, I've reached the end of the tunnel and all the way through down the middle, most of the items have been deleted. But then on the sides... There's way more, so I think it's in my best interest to stick to the sides. I'm not sure why it's done that, because I had the keep item setting switched on. But maybe it's something to do with me running it at a 15 payload. I, I don't know. And look at this. I've nearly filled a shulker box, I think, actually. I'm not too far off, am I? Yeah, just uh, a few more stacks. And sticking to the edge is definitely a good way to get a lot of the diamonds fast. Even though there are ones if you go further in, and I'm getting distracted by them. The vast majority are at the sides. There we go. It's looking pretty awesome, isn't it? And that also means we're over a quarter of the way there. And once I've mined up these, I've once again filled up my inventory, which means I have 50 stacks of diamonds in total. And I should probably now use this opportunity to craft them into blocks just so that I have a bit more space. There we go. That, that does make me look quite rich, doesn't it? And I can get back to collecting. And, and, and I feel like I'm now kind of on the home straight. I haven't even been collecting the diamonds in the middle. I've just been sticking to the edges. It's definitely sped things up. And I'm just going to keep going as fast as I can. Now, once I have grabbed these, in fact, I've got it. That brings me to 75 stacks and, <laughs> and one diamond. Which means I'm getting very close because there's now just 25 stacks to go. 
I eventually ran out of diamonds at the side, so I've now just been collecting the ones in the middle. And I think at this point, I've got enough. I think I've collected all 100 stacks. Yep, I needed 11 stacks and 9 blocks of diamond. I've got a spare one. And as I'm heading back, I might as well grab more diamonds that I see on the way. Just to make sure that I'm completely, well and truly topped up. And it's also a lot easier to see where the ores are at once you turn the render distance up. Alright, I'm just going to ignore diamonds now. I'd love to keep mining, but we've got to press on with the project. It feels so terrible just to be seeing them in the ground and just... <laughs> Just flying straight past. I'm right, just mining these two, won't hurt. But we need to focus now on the project, which is to transform a normal desert pyramid into an extremely OP diamond one. Here we go, back at the Invinable, and also now back home as well. And now as well as these diamond blocks, I'm also gonna need light blue concrete, which I have loads of here, thanks to last episode. Then I also need a bit of black concrete. And finally, a block of netherite, which unfortunately I, I don't have, but in this sugar box of treasure, we have plenty of ancient debris, which I can split up into the furnaces, then combine with gold to make a netherite block. Perfect. There's nothing more that I now need. So let's get busy and begin the building project. There's just one slot left, as you can see, for the diamond desert pyramid to go. I'm firstly also just going to change these grass blocks to be diamond so that it looks a little bit better when you see the grass path. It, it, you know, it looks like it goes underground. And this is the complete border of the diamond blocks. Now on the outside, it's all going to be diamond. On the inside, it's going to be light blue concrete. And the reason for this is simply because it would require another 400 diamond blocks or another like 60 stacks of diamonds. Just didn't have time for that. So I think diamond on the outside and blue concrete on the inside is a, is a nice compromise. So in the floor here, we're going to have the pattern that you see in every single desert pyramid. But in the very, very middle, we're going to have a netherite block just to make it a little bit more OP. There's going to be pillars right here, which is why I've left gaps in the floor. So I know where they go. And I can also begin layering up the outer walls as well. Now you can see why I needed so many diamonds. The downstairs bit is also pretty much done now. So I can start adding the ceiling to this room, which also acts as the floor to the second room up here. I'm going to keep on building this up and around. I've got the two entrances here. So this is this part finished, but I still need to do the front face kind of thing and these two towers that you see on either side. The towers are fairly straightforward. It's just getting that pattern correct. But once you've got that, you're then just layering it up and roofing it off. Now to do the exact same thing on this side. And with that done, it's just time for this middle bit here, which I call the face. Really, it's just a pair of eyes. So it's very, very simple. So there you have it. The front is done. And not only is the front done, the entire build is as well. So this is my very OP desert pyramid. I'd love for the entire thing to be diamonds, as I said, but the time it would take to get all of those diamonds on top of what I already got, it's just going to be so many more hours that <laughs> I just can't do that. But from the outside, it looks absolutely amazing. And I know I haven't done every single structure in the game. I mean, there's a lot of them. But I decided I wasn't going to do the underground ones. I wasn't going to do the underwater ones. And I wasn't going to do the end ones. Villages have loads of variants, so I didn't want to make a custom village. Woodland mansions were too big. They could just be their own video. And there was too many Bastion variants as well. So I just picked the six that were kind of my favorites that I wanted to transform. And if you'd like to download my world to check out those builds, my Patreon is linked in the description that has the new download link. And if you'd like to know how I built a farm to get all of this unlimited bedrock, click the video on screen right now. Or if you'd like to see how I got all of these rare and impossible blocks in Minecraft, I mean, just, just look at some of them. Then click the other video that is on your screen right now.